Now in this video we are going to discuss a component of a very complicated system known as the limbic system and specifically we're going to look at a portion of the limbic system known as the hippocampal formation. Now the hippocampal formation is best studied in terms of its processing of memories and it is a bilateral structure meaning it's on both sides of the brain and it lives in the medial or middlemost portion of the temporal lobe. So if we look at a MRI scan, and this is a, a cut as if we were looking at somebody head-on, the hippocampal formation is going to sit in the medial temporal lobes right in this region right here. So if we blow this up and make it more zoomed in, what we can see is that this white stuff here is cerebrospinal fluid sitting within the lateral or inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, and the hippocampus is going to be this structure right in here, and just beneath it is a structure known as the parahippocampal gyrus. And that's going to be important when we talk about the circuitry uh, of this structure in a few slides. So what composes the hippocampal formation? It's actually several different structures. And um, the first structure is what's known as the dentate gyrus. The second structure is what I'm going to call the hippocampus proper. And you'll sometimes hear the term Amon's horn, which is sometimes broken up into these uh, subdivisions known as CA1, CA2, and CA3. And then thirdly is uh, an area known as the subiculum. So these three structures form the hippocampal formation. Now, if we take a look at kind of a cartoon picture uh, of this MRI here, okay, what you'll see is that this yellow area is the hippocampus proper. Okay? The red area here is going to be your dentate gyrus. The green here is going to be the subiculum. subiculum. And then this blue here is going to be an area known as the entorhinal cortex. And we haven't discussed that yet, but will in the next slide when we talk uh, about the circuitry uh, of the hippocampus. Now, so how exactly is all this stuff hooked up together? Now the entorhinal cortex is a vital component of the hippocampal um, system, uh, although not technically part of the hippocampal formation. But with the entorhinal cortex, the way I like to think of, uh, of it is like St. Peter at the pearly gates. It's going to um, basically be the guardian of what gets into the hippocampus. And so there's information coming from many, many different locations. For example, a cingulate gyrus, olfactory input about smell, um, orbital cortex in the frontal lobe, uh, contralateral temporal lobe information, information coming from the amygdala, is all coming into the entorhinal cortex. And it's the job of the entorhinal cortex to take that information and then pass it on to the hippocampal formation. So the first stop for that information is going to be on the granule cells of the dentate gyrus. Now, this pathway is, is sometimes referred to as the perforant pathway because it actually pierces or perforates the subiculum uh, before getting to the dentate gyrus. Now, the granule cells are then going to pass that information on further to the hippocampus proper, and specifically pyramidal cells in the CA3 portion of Amon's horn, and that information is then going to get bumped along to CA1 pyramidal cells of the hippocampus proper, and then finally, it's going to pass up to neurons in the subiculum. Now, the neurons in the subiculum are going to send, basically, uh, ac uh, axons or white matter tracks into a bundle of fibers known as the fornix. Now, the fornix is the main outflow tract of information going to many other areas of the brain, so multiple areas outside the hippocampal formation. So, for example, the fornix will send information to the septal nuclei, the hypothalamus, the anterior thalamus, the mammillary bodies, the medial frontal cortex, uh, many different regions responsible uh, for information processing. Now, ultimately, this is a very kind of basic overview of the circuitry of the hippocampus uh, in a much larger limbic system that is extremely complex um, but I hope that this gives you an idea of how information passes uh, from structure to structure.